some kind of monsters and invisible kids made slip here today. I'm going to be talking about Saint Anger. Here's the thing about Saint Anger. Um, you know, with the many reviews that are out there, including my own old review, I think that most people get so caught up on just making a funny video and making fun of the album that they forget to actually review it. And um, I pretty much kind of did the same thing a long time ago. So I'm going to try to actually review Saint Anger. I want to go ahead and talk about the bad things because there are some bad things on this album. Um, the sound is not good. You know, Metallica were going for a very raw sound at this time. Which kind of, you know, looking back on it, kind of comes out of nowhere. But if you look at a lot of metal at the time, a lot of new metal at the time, um, the sound is not that far out of left field. There are some aspects that kind of are, like the drum sound. Mainly Lars turning the snare off, which, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about that. It doesn't sound good, but should he have done it? I don't know. You know, uh, Metallica tries to do new things as much as they possibly can, and a lot of bands do, and sometimes it really works, and it goes somewhere, but I think this time they, they took a gamble, and it just didn't work out, and they're going to get made fun of it for the rest of their career. The actual drumming on the album is very good, only because it's so pieced together and so fake, and even Morris has admitted it. Um, the bass is an issue because there's no life, there's no soul to it because it's being played by Bob Rock, who basically phoned it in. You know, he just had to go in there and do it because they needed to put an album out. I still think that it was a huge mistake for them to not find and establish a real bass player on this album. I think even um, Rob Trujillo, Trujillo could have brought some pretty cool things to this album as far as the bass goes. And he actually did when they did it live. It sounded like, at the very least, he took those bass parts and he, he put some life into it. So, that's a thing. Um, obviously, the guitar solo's not being there, to be quite honest. I wouldn't care so much if they didn't make all their songs so long. I mean, and that's one of the huge problems with a lot of the songs on this album. And, um, to me, kind of kills the album. It really, really does, the fact that the songs are so long, because if you got no solos and your music's not too great, the only thing that you can do is repeat everything over and over and over again, and that's pretty much what they do throughout the entire album. So the biggest issue that I probably have with this album is the very fact that it feels so lifeless, and in many ways it doesn't really even feel like Metallica. I mean, the drums are very robotic. They don't sound good because of the snare. Um, there is no guitar solos, so I guess Kirk Hammett just doesn't exist. And um, the bass parts were played by Bob, who was just kind of filling in. So I, there's really not a lot to hold on to as far as most of this album goes. But here's the thing about St. Anger. The fact of the matter is, and nobody wants to admit it, a lot of the music on this album is actually really good. It's just very catchy. Um, and that's something that Metallica, you know, got really good at. The lyrics, the vocal patterns, the verses, the choruses are extremely memorable. I know almost every single lyric off this album when I hear it. And that says something. I think that if you can do that, um, you, you have to be some kind of a good songwriter. Um, and that definitely happens on this album, and the lyrics that I'm actually singing along to this album I think are actually very good. I think this album has some of James's best riffs on it, and I think, honestly, that there was a great album within this album that it just, for many reasons, it wasn't made properly. That's, that's pretty much how I feel about this album. I think if they would have got a bass player, Rob, before they actually started recording this album, um, if they would have, you know, kind of shortened the songs down a bit and not repeat too much, if they would have had Kurt play solos and maybe add some more musical sections to some more songs, I think this album probably would have been, and also fix the sound, because it did not sound that good, especially the drums, I think this album actually would have been pretty good. But it's easy to look back and to say how you would fix, how you would change, and how you would do this album. 
Uh, we all do it. It's it's one of the most flawed albums, so it's easy to do that. And here's the other thing, and the other reason why a lot of people are able to do that, because they actually made the Some Kind of Monster documentary during most of the making of this album, so we could all look you know, through the looking glass and, and see so many issues and so many problems that were going on that we, looking back now, and I'm sure, by the way, the band themselves looking back, look at it and, and think, we should have done this, we should have done that, we should have done this, and, and all would have been okay. But isn't that true for a lot of us in our lives? You know, we all make mistakes, we go through bad times, situations are created by outside forces, and us as well, that, um, you know, will create bad things. And I think that that's pretty much what happened with St. Anger, in my opinion. Looking at the actual situation at the time, I do not think that they should have created an album this quick, especially since it was pretty much going on during the making of this album. They were falling apart, you know, there were so many issues, and, and I just wonder why they made an album. It's not like they needed to financially, um, and I think that that has a lot to do with the record company and, and the corruption of record companies not caring about how the band is actually doing, which a lot of you guys, if you're familiar with a lot of bands, We'll hear about eventually. So is St. Anger flawed? Absolutely it's flawed. But the band was flawed. They, they, they were just not in the right, you know, kind of headspace to make an album. And, you know, given that, um, you know, they, they were having therapy. They had to write songs in very unusual settings. Um, and I think even through all of that, they still made some memorable stuff. And I really hope that someday Metallica redoes... Um, St. Anger. I'm hoping for on their next album, this would be my my wish, that they would go in with whatever sound they have on the next album and redo St. Anger, shorten all the songs, add the solos, you know, have Rob bring whatever he wants to bring to the table and play it like they would new music. And I think that that would be absolutely fantastic because the original recording is just, yeah, terribly, terribly flawed. So, you know, in my opinion, St. Anger is not the worst metal album of all time. It is the Metallica album that could have been. Um, it, it could have been great, actually. And I think they could still go in there, redo it, and fix it. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, and there's nothing you can really do about the actual album that I'm reviewing today. So I'm going to give St. Anger by Metallica a 4 out of 10, and I'll see you guys later.